Hello World Wide Web, it's Brad Ward with Ward's Auctions and Bud Haynes Auctions. We are currently in the uh, near the end of February, we're just a little over two weeks away from the March 16th firearms auction and we're actually more organized than usual which is a little bit weird and I say that probably jinxing us and something's gonna go wrong and it's gonna be last minute. But fantastic sale, we are currently at a th about a thousand and fifty lots for the Saturday sale, which is live and online, of course. And then this time, you're also going to have 600 and some, maybe even as many as 700 lots in what we call the West Bay that is online bidding only. By the time you're seeing this video, you can already bid on that sale. So that's a link from wardsauctions.com. And uh, I'll explain that a little bit in a, in a minute, but it's, it's a different session. It's a same sale different sessions. So if you're doing online bidding for one, you're registering for one, you are registered for both of them. It's a two-day sale, only one's closing two days before the regular sale or even more. So in fact, let's just cover that right now. So what we're going to do, by the time you're seeing this, it's already bidding live. It's going to close starting about somewhere in the afternoon of March 13th. You'll have all the details by your time you're registered. March 13th, starting in the afternoon and every 30 seconds a lot closes in order, in catalog order. And so you'll be able to uh, pre-bid or bid at the last second or do whatever you want. You'll also get a chance on Thursday, March 7th uh, to view that in person. Probably 3 o'clock till 7 o'clock. I'm going to carve it in stone right now. 3 o'clock till 7 o'clock on the 7th. You'll be able to come live in person. You won't be able to view the rest of the sale. If I, this little stuff will all be put away again. Right now we're just getting it out double checking what we have, dotting a few I's and then it'll all go back into the vault. Um, so then you'll be able to come and, and view that stuff in person and then it'll close a week after that. So watch the website for that. The viewing for this sale, the live sale, is on Friday the 15th, March 15th, 2019, from 3 in the afternoon till 8 in the evening. And then the sale will start sharp at 10 o'clock on the 16th and we'll open an hour before that so you can have last minute viewing on that morning as well. Um, consign now. I mean you can see that where the stuff comes in the door so if you want to be in for the spring sale or whenever this next sale is get it in the building now. Don't wait till two days before sale and then be wonder why you can't get in. Get it into us now. The sales are in Edmonton. Now, there's still a few people getting used to the fact that sales are not held in Red Deer anymore. Most people have their head around it now but we still get the occasional confused person phoning. 11802 145th Street in Edmonton, Alberta. Um, there is signage for Ward's auctions and there's signage for Bud Haynes auctions on, on the building so it's pretty easy to see. www.wardsauctions.com uh, shipping for firearms and miscellaneous is through Canada Post, as, as always. We do get some people that get confused, not so much on the guns because they are a flat rate, but on miscellaneous when they've bought miscellaneous, and then they're in shock at how much it costs to get it shipped. So you can do your own homework. You can go into Canada Post and estimate the size and weight and put in your postal code, and you can get an idea. And it'll also show you the maximums that a box can be. Uh, so that might sh shock you as well. Ammo is going to be shipped this sale, CANPAR only. There's going to be some limitations on what they won't ship. We'll have details closer to the sale. So you'll be able to bid on ammo, uh, shipped COD through CANPAR, and, uh, and we probably won't ship anything till probably two weeks after the auction so that it all can happen on one day. So you'll, you'll get details on the website for that as well. Uh, next door, most of it is non PAL required, but there are some exceptions, so watch for that. Most of you guys are going to have PALs anyhow, that's just sort of the nature of the beast. Uh, for the registration, make sure you fill out the form. Don't email or phone saying, why do I have to fill out the form? The supplementary form that we send you, not the one that ICE collector sends you, the one that we send you, just fill it out. It takes you two minutes, takes less time than phoning and finding out why. Ex reasons why are what slows us down. Things like range membership expired, or uh, a PAL date uh, expiration is changed, or your address has changed. It's just easier to fill it out. We have it all. We ship so much stuff, it's just so much easier after the sale. We have stuff in this sale, literally was not in the sale, in the last sale, literally sold to an RCMP officer who still has not given us a range membership. He has not got the guns. They're not transferred out of the seller's name, so their seller's not happy. The RCMP member is now blacklisted, can't bid in the sale. You don't want that. And it just, it just creates more and more work for everybody here. It's just not worth it. 
No transfers are going to happen on sale day anymore. Uh, Miramichi is not opening up at all. They only did four anyhow, so it doesn't really matter. It's not going to make a big difference. Uh, they're all going to happen afterwards. And a lot of the time, really, you don't, we don't even get notification. The first few days we do, and then, but if it's been a week and a half, um, chances are you're just going to get a thing in the mail before we ever hear anything. So, and don't, don't assume we know. At that point, send us a scan of it or call us or whatever. Um, the other thing that can happen, and I know this is more about policy than it is about the, the product in the sale. Uh, the product in the sale, you can see the galleries. Uh, Jim and Linda are still cataloging away over there. You can see all, everything on the website. Um, most of it's on there now, and there'll be more added as, as we get closer. Um, there's also a video on the website sort of specific about online bidding. And the, you really need to watch that because it explains why sometimes you think you bought something and you didn't. And there's two reasons, two real reasons why that can happen. If you're pre-bid, call it $200, and then somebody live bids online during the sale for $200 and it lands at 200, you were at say 175, computer bid you to 175, somebody went live online 200 and then it gets sold at 200, it actually sells to the person that pre-bidded. If you're the online live bidder, you can tell you're not on if you're paying attention. If the button is clickable, you're not on. If it's grayed out and you can't click on it, then you're on, right? It's as simple as that. So don't, I mean, you always get the phone calls, I was on, I was on, you weren't on. So, but you can think you're on. And the other way that it's reversed is if you've pre-bid 200, the computer through timing, somebody on the floor bid 150, you went 175, or the computer did for you, then the floor does 200, and that's where it ends. The floor's gonna get it for 200, because you had nowhere to go. It's just like if you were in the room, and you said my maximum's 200, but you were on a 175, you're the underbidder, you can't be the underbidder and the high bidder. So that's sort of the abridged version, but there is a video that explains it that Michael put on there ages ago, um, that explains it. It's a long video, but I, I recommend you watching it. So blah, blah, blah with all the notes. Let's go look at the sale. Uh, probably a lot of you watched the little video that I think we posted literally two or three days after the December sale, uh, where we had gone to Ontario and picked up Joe Larilla's estate items and got them here for the sale. And had lots of firearms, lots and lots of firearms, and lots of accessories, including a pile, plethora of different types of antique ammo, rimfire, uh, 32 long and original boxes full. Uh, the list goes on and on. I'm not even going to start to to get into that. Schneider stuff, rimfire stuff in different categories and calibers and so on. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. I really recommend that you come in person and view. Of course, those that are out of town, we get it because we literally had to open up every single box, um, kind of explain what was in them, reseal them again. Um, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be times when, well, that ammo wasn't factory to that box or half of it wasn't or whatever. Um, it would have been too, too big of a job to verify every single round in every single box, as you, I'm sure you can appreciate. But it still is, uh, a lot of it is full, complete, and original. There's going to be some anomalies. Um, so I don't want to make it sound like there'll be a bunch of that, but certainly some. So the, the better you see in person, uh, the better. There's some antique firearms, there's some bayonets, including this one here, which always catches my attention just because of just the gnarliness of that edge when it digs in. Like, talk about man's inhumanity to man. Anyhow, uh, some fantastic pieces there. There's trench art. I'm going to bring my little clipboard here in case I want to reiterate my notes. Not a lot of miscellaneous in this session of the sale, the live and online. The ammunition is the bulk of it. You've got this table with some helmets and books and boxes of stocks and so on. Um, but you've got six or 700 lots next door. So most of the 1,100 lots that you're going to be finding in the, the, the sale for the 16th is firearms. Uh, you know, I don't know how many we have yet, but I'll be surprised if it doesn't get close to 800. I mean, it's got to be over uh, 700 now. So you're used to seeing so much miscellaneous on walls and so on, and you're not going to see it this time. In here, 
again, uh, from Joe's stuff, he's got a, a hand grenades and so on. We did have a fun afternoon one day, and uh, with a bit of luck we'll actually get some stuff on the video for you or somewhere else on the website, where we had the bomb squad here um, for about four hours, and then they called in uh, the, some people from the Canadian military, and they confiscated some of our bombs. So it happens, you know, but they prefer that, you know, we don't sell live munitions to civilians. And I guess I can agree with them to a point. Uh, it was an interesting afternoon, anyhow. This is a drum mag that was consigned with a Tommy gun that's in the sale, and that's going to get sold by itself, of course. So that's pretty fun. Showing some more of the vintage ammo. You're going to want to take your time and really don't rush the viewing of this sale. There is so much to see. So come take your time, look at the ammo, look at the antique stuff, look at the firearms, because uh, there is no shortage of them. We still, in fact, as I mentioned, we're, we're close, we're, we're ahead of the game. We still actually have Jim and Linda over here uh, cataloging. So uh, maybe Linda want to talk to us about the Calgary Gun Show? Yes, uh, an important notice, the Calgary Gun Show uh, 50 years plus in running has a date change this year so just remember it's not the Easter weekend it's March 29th and 30th and that's one of the largest shows if not the largest show in Canada it's a great education and that's where you really get to see the items in, in uh, live so to speak so be sure to take that in we will be at our usual table on the far west wall I think it's our 48th year being at that show so just remember the Calgary Gun Show March 29th and 30th the last weekend in March and uh, I was mentioning to Brad that uh, today, um, in cataloging today, we found a couple of guns that um, we discovered had uh, been sold by my late father, Bud Haynes, over 40 years ago. And this is a blunderbuss, a Reed blunderbuss. It's from the uh, 16th, thanks Brad, the 16th century. And I think it's just incredible the condition it's in. Be wonderful display. This is antique, no pal required. Of course, you know, treat with respect. But just what a neat item to come in to think it went over the auction block. This is our 53rd year of business this year. Been amalgamated with awards to be six years shortly. Another item the client brought in, he had purchased at the same time period. And this is a Arabian, I'm not going to say this right, Michelet musket, 50 percussion. Again, no pal required antique. Wonderful display item. And again, was sold at Bud Haynes auctions over 50 years ago. And I'm just mentioning what a wonderful investment firearms are and they always go up so it's something that you can put your money into and you're never ever going to regret the decision we hope to see you at the sale right on thanks Lynn. I just it's mind-boggling 40 years ago uh, sold through Bud Haynes and company auctioneers and uh, here it is back in the sale today I have this Luger out is not for any other reason than to remind me to tell you um, that we have coming um, theoretically three Lugers with the new barrels that are just slightly longer that are going to get re-registered as restricted. Um, at that time I'll do a video showing one or the other and I'm, it's possible I did one once before, I don't remember. It's, it's, it shows the asinine um, restrictions on that prohib because literally you add an eighth of an inch and, and you've got a, a restricted Luger. It's, uh, I'm not going to talk about too many of the guns. It, look, look at I, I would go nuts. Um, there's so many of them. There's vintage, there's, there's older, there's the Mauser here, uh, there's this Ruger 44 Magnum. Came in with, uh, with uh, they, they weren't Joe's, they were a different little pile. And I don't think four or five different firearms ever got around through them. There's a very, very slight cylinder ring on there, playing with it in the, in the living room. I don't think it ever got around, or if it did, it was one or two, uh, that sort of thing. Lots of Lugers, lots of Prohibs, lots of great long guns. We, we passed by the Swiss Arms stuff, uh, classic greens up on the wall that are actually in non-restricted currently classification. And then there is, uh, I think somewhere there's a restricted, uh, shorter barreled restricted one, but there's some non-restricted pieces there. Uh, and then of course we got restricted carbines and so on here. Uh, this is a non-restricted Luger. <coughs> We've got the Tommy gun I mentioned earlier uh, that has that, that, drum, that uh, drum mag that uh, we'll sell separately, catalog separately. There were things in, here's another little piece of housekeeping for the collectors. Um, we deal with a lot of stuff that comes in that was not registered. It's under the radar somehow 
and you're thinking, well, you can't bear to get rid of it, or you can't bear this or that. Well, once we get it, we kind of have to deal with it. So a lot of stuff gets surrendered in, in whole for one reason or another, and once they get it, they destroy it. Um, but in the case of these, these were pieces that were not on the books, so, but we were able to strip them uh, and sell other than the receiver. This one still has the receiver on it. We're going to cut that off. So by the time you get to the sale, um, this fell will have all the parts, the, the components from the inside, and it's in really nice condition, and it'll have the barrel, but we will have cut off um, rather than risk r damaging the barrel, unscrewing it, because it's pretty tight on there. We're just going to cut that off. So keep in mind that eventually it has to get dealt with, and it ends up being us that, that does it. So the more eyes you can dot while you're still healthy, and this is talking to some of the guys that are getting a little bit older. Uh, this marbles piece was, is a great piece. This is a little survival gun, folding stock that goes inside. It was restricted. Not to throw anybody under the bus, but this is a restricted firearm that was gifted to somebody um, without transferring, without doing a registration transfer. Old school guys, we, you know, we know half of us are like that and half are not. Uh, old school thing, well that's none of their damn business, I'm going to do what I want. But again, once it ends up here, we end up having to deal with it. So this was literally given to somebody, but not transferred. Um, there's new guns in the sale. These are kind of neat. You know, again, survival. These are pistol caliber. So they, um, so you get 10 rounds in them, but they fold up. There's, there's one in camo. These are Caltech, uh, what do they call it, sub 2000. Um, this one's a, in camouflage, pistol mags. So you can have 10 rounds, and then there's a black one. The black one, they've got sort of tactical up, including uh, a laser sight on it and, and that sort of kind of fun stuff. There is some other new in-box stuff that you're seeing down here. Um, it's still some that isn't even out, but most of what is in the sale is vintage. Vintage Winchesters in every make, model, vintage. Enfield, new, um, newer lever actions. You know, here's a newer piece, very low miles on it, obviously, 357. So, what a fun little plinker that is. This one here is sort of neat. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen one of these, one of the reproduction versions of this one. What a fun little gun that is, in 357 Magnum. So, you can have a lot of fun just plinking, plinking with that. A lot of vintage stuff. I'm bringing my clipboards, so I'm going to want to rehash some stuff. And you can see that it's vintage. You can see that it's vintage. There's a Bren gun. Here's another oddity. Uh, gentleman passed away, of course, and now we can't talk to him. Where's all the magazines for his firearms? So, you know, there's a weirdness. There's probably somewhere in a box, somewhere, there's all these magazines because there's a whole bunch of vintage firearms. We don't have the magazines for them. They probably exist. Look at the racks Michael's showing you over here. We're so full of firearms. These handguns that were next to that Bren gun, uh, they're not even on the website yet. They're, we're still cataloging. Jim and Linda are not leaving until they are finished. But it keeps on going and keeps on going and keeps on going. I do have a couple of favorites down here. Where is, where is my favorite shotgun? Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's a pump action, but a very different pump action. I mean, we've seen them before. We've seen them before, but it's just sort of neat to see them again. What a cool action that is. More vintage on the other side. As you can imagine, the fact that the racks, the rolling racks are still full, we rolled them out of the vault and we couldn't get them onto these racks, shows you that the next row over there is full as well. We may as well go give you a quick peek at it. It just goes on and on and on. And you are seeing mostly vintage. Yes, there's some new. There is some brand new. But out of 700 and almost 800 firearms, I'm going to say 95% are vintage. Some of them are going to be a uh, couple together where they're a bit more miscellaneous, parts guns or whatever. But even that, not that many. Most of it is just good vintage firearms. I'm just looking, I'm sort of viewing, I'm sort of in shock at the volume. It's wonderful. So let's sort of, uh, let's call that a wrap. Um, the viewing for the live sale, Friday, March 
15th, 3 o'clock till 8 o'clock in the afternoon, of course. The sale is March 16th, 2019. Uh, starting doors at 9, sale starts sharp at 10. Be in your seats. Uh, Linda mentioned the, the gun show. Go down. I might be there too, uh, but Linda and Jim will be there, and I think they're going to have calendars. Um, so if you're there early enough, you can get a complimentary calendar. Um, Consigned now for forthcoming sales. Wardsauctions.com is the, is the website. 11802 145th Street in Edmonton, Alberta is where the sale is. 780-451-4549 is the phone number. Uh, the, uh, the, the next door is online only, not live. And uh, but you, will, you will get an opportunity at least this time for a live viewing. Um, if you're registered for one of the sessions, you're registered for both for the online bidding. Uh, we talked about the transfer process and the why didn't I get my gun bidding complex. I think we've covered it all. Thanks very much. Um, if you have questions, give us an email, give us a call. We are answering some questions now because the guns are out for people that have said, hey, can, you know, what is this or what is that or can I see a picture of a one, you know, a one or two additional pictures. We can accommodate that to a point. But you see, after today, I'm going to do those. After today, all these are going to be away again until viewing day. So we won't be able to answer those. But in the future, as you're seeing stuff go online for a future sale, don't be afraid to send a, a, a reasonable request for information on something. Not bore conditions. We won't address that. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Brad Ward.